Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains, that's in Missouri, in the USA. Today, we're taking a look at a little device that makes loading and saving programs from your TRS-80 Model 100 and related computers much, much easier. These backpack drives were developed by a friend of mine over the last four to five years, and there's only a limited number in circulation at this time. This was kind of a trial run of some handmade units before a full production batch was done. I may still have a few on hand by the time you see this video, so if you're interested, drop me a line. Link in the description. This video is intended as a quick start of sorts to help get you up and running when you get your backpack drive, and there'll be other videos that'll dive into some of the more advanced features of the device. Well, let's get started. Candy released two different models of 3.5 inch disk drives for the Model 100 family. These were actually made by Brother for knitting machines. The Tandy Portable Disk Drive 1 could hold a whopping 100K, and the Tandy Portable Disk Drive 2, like this guy here, could hold a whopping 200K into 100K partitions. The backpack was made to work like the Tandy Portable Disk Drive 2, but it uses micro SD cards instead. It also has a real-time clock built into timestamp files, and it runs on a single AA battery. The real-time clock uses a CR1025 battery. The hand-built units come pre-assembled with the cases and the CR1025. You'll need to supply the SD card and a AA battery. In the future, the drives will come as a partially pre-assembled kit. All the surface mount soldering will be done on a production line, so only the easier through-hole parts are left, or you'll be able to get a fully assembled unit. You can choose to add a 3D printed case from a variety of colors, or you can print your own as the files are available. I'm also thinking about offering the option of getting a pre-formatted SD card as well as some folks no longer have the smaller capacity cards on hand. Let me know what you think about that. The backpack drive comes already nestled in its case. And all we need to do is remove these two number four screws. And then carefully slide the case halves off. You can see here where the real-time clock battery goes. Got our DB25. Couple loopback switches here, which are set according to the computer that you're using it on. And there's some headers here, which are used for other purposes. All we need to do here is pop our battery in, like so. Make sure this switch is up and off. We want to make sure that our loopback switches are set to the right here. That's the position you'll probably need it in for your machine. You can look in the user's menu though for your specific application. And we can go ahead and put the screws back in. On the front of the unit, there is some embossing in the plastic that tells you what each switch does. And there's a dot to indicate the on position. There's also a dot here on the power switch to indicate the on position. But when you turn it on, you'll see the LEDs flash there. And this LED staying on is telling me I do not have the SD card installed. Let's take care of that right now. All of the files and documentation for the backpack is on my GitHub. Here is the address, and I will put it in the description down below. What you want to do is go and find the latest release and download the sector0.zip file. This file contains a sector0 folder, which has all the various TS-DOS type clients in it for the various computers, and a help folder. The help folder is a list of um, Model 100 document files that has help for all the various commands. And you can edit these and add to them and things like that. So you'll want to copy the entire Sector 0 folder over to your formatted SD card. I suggest formatting at FAT32 with a 4096 allocation unit size. 
that's known to work and you should be able to format it like that from just about any p type of PC. Once we have our SD card programmed, we can slide off the SD card access door. Now when you first get the cases, these will fit a little tight as you use it a few times. That'll loosen up to the point where it fits real nice, but still stays in position. And we'll just slip our card in there and pop the door back on. Now we're ready to set up the computer. It's always a challenge to get a good shot on video of these old LCD screens and not get a lot of reflections, but hopefully this will work out well. So I've got my Tandy 102 sitting out here and I'll go ahead and turn him on. And you notice this is just bone stock. It has nothing installed on it. I've got my drive turned off. The switch is up away from the dot and can't quite see the port there. I'll plug him in. The serial port on the 102 is upside down compared to the 100, which is kind of odd. If we had TS-DOS already installed on this unit, that would be all we would need to do is just fire up TS-DOS. Um, if we don't, like I have here, we can bootstrap TS-DOS into RAM. So what we'd want to do is go into basic and type run com 98N1ENN. And what this is telling BASIC to do is to pull a program off the serial port and run it. So I'm going to hit enter and then turn the backpack on. We'll just have to wait a little bit here. And we'll see this initial program loader to screen. Wait a minute. And yeah, that is literally a minute. It's actually a couple of minutes. So I'll speed up this part of the video so you don't have to wait here with me. Oh, there we go. Now it tells us it's installing TS-DOS. The initial program loader looks at the computer and will then pick the correct version of TS-DOS or Teensy, etc. for that computer. And you can configure those boot options on the backpack drive itself. And installing TS-DOS into RAM like this will take a few more minutes. And now we just need to follow the directions here and do a save TS DOS. And then go back to the menu. And now we will have TS DOS installed. And if we select it, we get our familiar TS DOS file. We can bring up the disk directory, traverse to folders, load a spiffy basic program, and easy. If we go back to our main menu now, we have the program we just loaded. Easy as that. If you have TS-DOS and ROM or you have a Rex, you don't have to go through this bootstrap process. It's just already there, which makes things a bit easier and it doesn't use any RAM. Now, in addition to the standard repertoire of TS-DOS commands, there's also an extensive command line interface. We get to that by going to Telcom or a similar program. We want to make sure that we have the COM port properties set correctly. So we'll do stat 98N1DNN. It says, OK, we've done that. We'll hit F4 and then enter four times, which tells our backpack that we want to talk to it. And we can do something like LS to list the directory. It shows us what's on our drive. We can do info. This one's very useful. It'll tell us our firmware version, the voltage, 
3.301 volts. This is stepped up from our battery voltage. The day, July 4th, 2021. Happy 4th of July to everyone in the United States. And our time, it's almost 9.45 a.m. And this particular version of the firmware has an uptime counter. It tells us our type of card and the size. A couple important things to note about this particular screen. Uh, when it goes to check the battery voltage, it will first turn on the SD card because it draws more current. It will then check the voltage. So if you get a check battery message here, it is detecting that the battery is low enough. It may hamper card access, so it's time to replace your battery. If you get a check card message, that means it cannot access the card. So either the card is not present or it didn't find sector zero, something like that. That sector zero folder needs to be there because it's used as part of this checking process. If we want to do something like setting the time, we just type in time 946. Oops. We would just type in time. 09.46.00 a.m. And we can confirm that by poking in time again. There we go. It's that easy. Something else you may want to do on occasion is update to a newer firmware. I like to do that by starting out with an ls command. You can see I have downloaded the new firmware from GitHub and I've placed it on my card. And I've already got this installed, but we'll go through it again to show you the process. And get back to my prompt and I'll type in boot U for update tpdd2104.bin. Enable, yes. And it's going to display the directory again. And it'll say this is the one you selected. Now we want to reboot. It'll go through the update process. It'll tell you it's done. And then because the drive reset, it's automatically going to dump that bootloader program. It's just displaying it on the screen. It's no problem. That's just part of the way the whole system works to detect when you're trying to uh, bootstrap into RAM. Now if this is done, you can hit enter four more times info and we can see that we are indeed at version 1.04. If you're using the backpack with say a Tandy WP2 you'll need to put it in WP2 mode because it speaks a slightly different dialect. You can do that from the CLI that's nice and easy. If you were to bring it back to let's say a 102 you would just put it back in the standard mode and there's also a third mode for use with CPM that allows you to use the larger CPM files. So you just need to make sure that your mode matches how you're using it. Now that you have your backpack configured, it's time to start using it and having some fun. I found it makes it really easy for loading and saving files, backing up rex images, etc. One final note on the WP2, it has a 9-pin serial port. So you will need a DB9 to DB25 adapter. Now my friend found a lot of these and he's just passing them along at his cost. These are Belkin adapters. They're new old stock. So if you need one, I can set you up with that. Um, let me know what you think about including a preformatted uh, SD card. It would be like an 8 gig or 16 gig, something like that. And if you are interested in one of these little guys, let me know. There may still be a few of that original handmade production batch. And then we're going to have them done on a real surface mount assembly line. And there'll be a video coming about that process as well. If you have any questions or comments, I would sure love to hear from you. Just leave them in the comment section down below and look in the description section for more information and contact info. Thanks and until next time, bye.